Today's scripture reading comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 through 20. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of the God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other, na- other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then the Lord said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it about tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called to him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you, Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, help us to hear when you call us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. The book of 1 Samuel is a very interesting book. A lot of good stories there. I urge you to read it. It's a story of, of how Samuel became the priest of Israel and the prophet. And the things that happened, we, we follow Samuel from the time his mother Hannah comes to the tabernacle to pray, and she's praying and moving her lips, and Eli thinks that she's drunk. And so he tells her, you need to leave, and she said, I'm not drunk, I'm, I'm praying for a son. She was barren, and she had a son. Now, in those days... Uh, there was a, an offering that you gave for your firstborn son uh, because you redeemed him from God. He belonged to God. And so you had to redeem him. You made an offering to redeem him and bring him back. But Hannah raised Samuel to a certain age, and then she took him and gave him to the temple, to God, to serve Eli uh, as, as a, a helper. And... In those days, it says in the scripture, the word of the Lord was rare. People didn't have the visions. Uh, the, the priesthood, basically, Eli was pretty corrupt. His children uh, were priests, and they did things they were not supposed to do, and Eli didn't say anything to them. And so things were pretty bad. And, and I think about that <clears throat> in, in, in these days. There's famine. In the world, there are mudslides, there are earthquakes, there are hurricanes, there are 
there is uh, oppression. There is lack of food. One of the I read an interesting article just recently that says the problem is not that we can't grow food to feed people. It's getting the food from where it is to the people who are hungry. If if you the Jackson is going through this problem. Uh, in, in these poor neighborhoods, there are no grocery stores. And so these people who are least able have to, to somehow get to the grocery store <clears throat> across town to come home with their groceries. And some of them don't have any way to get there, and so they eat unhealthy foods, and therefore Mississippi leads the country, and we're number one in obesity. And I doing my part. Where's Jamie? He, he was... Yeah. yeah. We're, we're doing our part, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, so, I, I think about all of these things that are happening, and, and, and I wonder, you know, is the word of the Lord rare in these days? Samuel was laying in, in the temple uh, getting ready to go to sleep and, and Eli was so old he could barely see anymore. And he called, uh, the, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel thought it was Eli. And so, so three times he went to Eli thinking that, that Eli had called him. But Eli finally understood what was going on. He said, next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And then uh, when Eli, when Samuel went back and lay down and the Lord called him for the third time, uh, he said, here am I, Lord. Speak for your servant listens. And the Lord began to talk to Samuel. Now, it says in the scripture that Samuel did not know the Lord yet. And this was his introduction to a personal relationship with God that would last to his death and then last forever. Samuel got the word from the Lord and it was not good. He was told to preach that Eli would be punished for the things that his sons were doing with, with his blessing. The next morning when Eli awoke, he went to Samuel and said, What did the Lord say to you? You need to tell me. And Eli, uh, Samuel didn't want to tell Eli. And Eli said, Please, you know, you got to tell me. Uh, no matter what he said, I, I've got to hear what the Lord said. And, and he told him, God is going to punish your house. And Eli said, well, let the Lord do, he knows best. Let the Lord do what he would do. An interesting story. With things that have been in the news lately, I, I thought about the other day, you know, my dog lives better than a lot of people in the world. She sleeps about 20 hours a day. She gets fed. She's got a warm place to sleep during, when she goes to sleep. Uh, she is, is well fed, and um, her food probably costs more than it would cost to feed people somewhere else. There are places in the world that don't have access to the things that we have and take for granted. Nowadays, you, if you start feeling bad, you can go to an all, uh, a 24-hour clinic and get emergency care in the emergency room of a hospital. When we were in Mexico, there were people that did not have access to their medicine, their hospitals, or their doctors. They were hours away. If anything happened, they were hours away from a doctor. And so, therefore, they didn't go to the doctor. They were very unhealthy. And the little people of, of Tlamec, Mexico, decided that they needed to build a compound for people to come and be able to see a doctor. 
And so they worked with the local government and with United Methodist Volunteers and Mission. And we went down and we built, bought some land, and we built a place where volunteers could come and stay with a kitchen and a room to sleep in and a room for the preacher when, when he came uh, down so he'd have a place to stay. He went to seminary in Mexico City and came down on the weekends. And we had a place for him uh, to stay. They decided that what they really needed was a clinic. They, they had built a church. And that was really nice. We redid the church and, and made it very a nice place to come and worship. But they decided what they really needed was a doctor. And so we began to send medical teams down and we began to build a building where they could come and receive medical care. Like I said, some of them had, were, were two and three hours away from the nearest doctor if they could find a way to get to him. And so we built this clinic and had doctors come in several times during the year. One day we were leaving, we're getting ready to leave, and had loaded up the bus and the nurses were standing outside. My job was logistics. I got them there. And, and I st sat there and, 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 and talked to people uh, as best I could with what little Spanish I had. My job was to get them there, and that's, that's what I did. And, and the, the doctors and nurses took care of all the other stuff. And so we were getting ready to leave, and this couple walks up. And the, the, the little, little wife, probably about 16 or 17 years old, was holding a little baby. And they couldn't. They didn't speak Spanish. They were Indians from the hills that were around Talamic. And they spoke very little Spanish. They didn't speak much Spanish at all. But we found somebody to translate, and they said the baby's sick. And one of the nurses took the baby and placed her hand on the head and said it felt like a frying pan. And so she took the baby in, immediately into the clinic and began to, to wipe it down with, with, with alcohol to, to cool it off and and, and they gave it uh, Tylenol um, so that, to bring the fever down. So we stayed an extra couple of hours until we got to the point where the baby was stabilized. That's emergency care for these people that had none. Someone heard the call to go and found a clinic. There was a doctor now that is assigned from the government to come and stay, to, to be there in, in the clinic a couple of times a week. So now they have access to medical care, that, which is a good thing in that farming community. Someone heard the call of Jesus and answered, and a little child who probably would have died was saved. Do you hear God calling your name? Do you hear in this time of conflict and upheaval, terrorism and, and uh, all these things that are going on in the world, our mission is not to talk about third world countries our mission is to go into these countries and to provide them opportunities to meet their Lord and Savior and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and to help them if they need water to help them dig wells, if they need medicine to build clinics where doctors can come, if they need food to find ways to give them food and shelter. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be the people of God. For the people of the world who are oppressed and live in, in, in squalor, in danger, and people who are 
living in countries who are refugees from their own country. We're called as Christians to do what we can. We're called to be in our community and be with those that are poor in our local area. Heed the call to be there to help to feed those who are hungry. Can you hear the voice of our Savior calling? What will you say? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we hear your call. And we say, here am I. Send me. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.